I guarantee that you've been to at least one presentation where you've seen the Gartner hype cycle. Almost every business presentation, technology presentation, is gonna include something about disruption and how the Gartner hype cycle is, is showing technologies that are going to change the way you work, they're going to disrupt your industry, they're going to put you out of business. But what's important is that we understand how to use the tool, how we actually, how we utilize the, the cycle to get the most bang from our investments. So the cycle is very simple. It starts with an innovation trigger. There's a need, we create a tool. That tool is going to fix all of the need. And as it gains popularity, it moves up the slope to the peak of inflated expectations and it does it very, very quickly. This is gonna be the end all be all solution to all of your problems. It's the greatest thing since sliced bread. It's gonna do everything all the time and it's gonna completely change how we do business. Every industry is gonna be impacted. Oh wow, you better be paying attention. Get in early, get in fast. You've gotta have this technology. And then it reaches to the top. And then you hear about it on the nightly news and every presentation you go to, you've got to be doing this. It is the best of the best of the best. You hear it at nauseum. But then reality kicks in. The technology is incredibly expensive. The technology doesn't actually do all of the things people thought it was going to do. The technology is hard to implement. And as these things come out, it starts moving down from the peak and it moves down towards the trough of disillusionment. And more and more problems are found with the technology. People see more challenges in implementing the technology and it slowly, slowly slides down that slope. And when it makes it into the trough of disillusionment, all of those droves of excited people, they abandon ship. This is never gonna work, it's too hard. My business will never be impacted, I can just ignore this. And as that happens, there are people who stay in the boat. And those people see the value of the tool. They see how it can impact them, how it can impact their clients, how it can be used. And they develop solutions around the technology. They develop best practices. They become enlightened. As they do that, we move up the slope of enlightenment. So we're building the technology to actually have purpose, to fit specific needs, to be implemented faster, cheaper. And as that happens, it moves into the plateau of productivity. And this is a constant cycle. This is something that almost every technology product goes through. But the way the customer sees it is more linear. We're gonna know that there's a need, and sometimes the next time we're gonna hear about it is when the solution is finished. Working with CPAs for over 20 years, what I can see in the profession is that they are aware when new technologies emerge. What they're not going to do is get super excited and follow the trend and get people into that peak of inflated expectation. Professional skepticism is going to keep them from becoming emotional about what this product can do. What they're really looking for is how the product's gonna impact their firm or their clients and how they can help drive the value of the product. Because if you come in at the peak of inflated expectations, it's gonna be very costly. It's gonna cost you both financially and in time to evaluate the product to work through the problems in the product. You're gonna be paying in time and money all the way down through the trough of disillusionment until you come up the other side at that slope of enlightenment. And that's not what CPAs are gonna advise their clients to do. What CPAs are gonna advise their clients to do is to get the maximum value for their investment. And that maximum value is gonna be found at that slope of enlightenment. That's where the product is gonna be stable enough that you can invest a little because people are hungry to get people onto the product, but still have the maximum flexibility in getting the product the way that you need it to work for you. That's the sweet spot. On top of that, when people show this, this cycle, they oftentimes leave out one of the most important parts, and that's the timing on the cycle, because every product's gonna move through the cycle at a different rate. If you look at this illustration of the cycle, you'll notice that blockchain is on its way down to the trough of disillusionment, while 5G is on its way up to the peak of inflated expectations. 
But looking at blockchain, it's expected that it's going to make it to the plateau of productivity in five to ten years. Whereas 5G is going to make it to the plateau of productivity in two to five years. Meaning that 5G is going to surpass blockchain on this and make it to the plateau of productivity faster. So if you're a business professional, which one should you be paying more attention to right now today? 5G is going to actually move past a number of these other technologies, but it's also going to enable them. So the data speed that 5G is going to bring, the connectivity that's going to offer, is going to change the rate in which we implement, for example, digital twins. And what a digital twin allows you to do is to create a virtual asset of a real world object. Think about being able to create a virtual distribution center based off of your real distribution center. What does that do for supply chain? What does it do for inventory management? It's a game changer. That combined with the Internet of Things gives us real world sight into a virtual community. 5G is going to help enable that, so it's going to drag things along with it and speed them up. So by watching 5G today and understanding it's going to get to the plateau of productivity fast, we can, we can make better decisions on when other things might need to be implemented, how quickly they're going to move down the slope. And it's important to maintain this view of what is happening when. It's not about where they're on the cycle because technologies aren't going to all make it to the plateau of productivity at the same time. So when you see the chart without the actual timelines, you can get bad data. More importantly, if you look at something like blockchain, you have to understand that blockchain actually has many, many parts in its own hype cycle. So when we look at the hype cycle for blockchain, you're going to see that there are several different steps and they're all in different parts of the cycle. What we need to do is understand what in blockchain is going to impact us or our clients right now. And again, how do we do that? We add a linear component to that. And you can very quickly see in blockchain what's important right now where you're going to get the most bang for your buck is in digital commodity exchanges. The ability for you to accept a cryptocurrency for payment, that's going to become mainstream in the next two to five years. So should we be trying to build our payment solutions with this in mind? Should we be advising clients to build payment solutions that accept cryptocurrencies? And the answer is yes, because complementary currency, which is mixing of actual paper currency and cryptocurrencies, that's a reality today. People own cryptocurrencies. They're wanting to spend their cryptocurrencies. And one thing you need to do as a business is to allow people the easiest way to make purchases. Now, there are risks in accepting cryptocurrency. The market is incredibly volatile. What's worth $10,000 today may be worth a dollar tomorrow. But as that stabilizes over time, as there's more real world backing of cryptocurrencies, it's going to become a real world solution. You and your clients should be looking at this because in the next two to five years, people are going to be able to expect to pay with different cryptocurrencies. And that's why that digital commodity exchange is right in that peak. That's the window that you wanna be looking at because you can help build the best practices. You can help steer the product to exactly what it, you need it to be for your business needs. And that's what makes it really important to understand the cycle. So if you take all the pieces of the cycle and you drill through the data, you can use this to be better educated, to better understand what you need to be doing now and in the next five to 10 years. But if you follow the news and you follow the hype cycle and you're just hitting everything at that peak of expectation, you're going to find very little value in this hype cycle. That is, unless, of course, you're a presenter who's trying to alarm everyone and force them into making a change. In that case, always focus on the peak of expectations and you'll be getting great ratings all the time.